Trinity, the first nuclear test in Alamogordo, New Mexico, was followed by over 2,000 nuclear tests. For five decades, one nuclear explosion shook and often irradiated the Earth, in average every nine days. In 1996, the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty was adopted. Shortly after, the treaty's organization in Vienna started its work. Although most countries in the world have joined the treaty, it still needs to be ratified by eight specific countries in order to enter into force. Nonetheless, nuclear testing has stopped almost everywhere. Almost. North Korea is the only country to have conducted nuclear tests in the 21st century. This is the story of how the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organization in Vienna detected the country's latest nuclear test in February 2013. On December 12, 2012, North Korea announced the launch of a rocket carrying a satellite. The launch was condemned by the United Nations Security Council as a covert ballistic missile test. In reaction, North Korea threatened to conduct a nuclear test. The Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organization in Vienna was ready, as always. Well, we actually have four different technologies that we use to monitor the solid Earth, the oceans, and the atmosphere for any nuclear test. For the solid Earth, we use primarily a seismic network, which most everybody is familiar with as monitoring earthquakes and so forth. We also have a hydroacoustic stations that we use to monitor the oceans, and we use infrasound stations to monitor the atmospheres for the actual blasts themselves. And before entry into force, it's very important for us to be able to demonstrate our capability, the fact that we can actually detect and locate and provide this information to our member states. When North Korea announced that it had conducted a nuclear test on February 12, 2013, in the early hours of that day, the first automatic data about the event's location, depth and magnitude had already been registered, processed and sent to member states. At uh, 2.57 UTC today, uh, we uh, recorded an event uh, in the peninsula, in terms of uh, geographical uh, uh, region, uh, with uh, roughly a magnitude of uh, 4.9. We detected the event on 94 of our seismic stations and two of our infrasound stations even. So it was a, a very easy event to detect and to report on. Uh, here is the data center for the CTBTO. Here is where the data from, the, from our monitoring stations all arrive here through the Global Communication Infrastructure Network. This data center was, uh, we started using here in 2005, uh, and it was it's, uh, built in an underground uh, environment. So it's highly, highly secured. Uh, you cannot enter here without uh, an authorization. We have uh, uh, supercomputers for our atmospheric transport modeling system. These are machines that have uh, about, one of them has about 168 uh, cores. So they are fast processing machines. So as the data come into the, uh, the International Data Center, we process them first automatically and then we have an interactive review process where we have human analysts look at all of the information. So during the DPRK, of course, this happened very early in the morning. It, it happened at uh, 3 a.m. our time or actually 4 a.m. our time, and so we had to get the, uh, the people come in and do work because it was a, more of a heightened state of alert where we wanted to uh, make sure that we got this information out to our member states in time so that they could have it and then they could um, see what was going on in the world. One of the CTBT member states who received data and analysis from the CTBTO was Austria. Yeah, the event in DPRK, uh, uh, was uh, rec recorded uh, in the in the CTPT uh, system, 
and at the Austrian National Data Center we have an uh, SMS uh, alert system uh, that sends us SMS every time uh, we get uh, uh, interesting events uh, from DPRK uh, close to the known uh, uh, test location uh, in, this, in this country. And uh, so we received an SMS in, uh, at about 3 o'clock uh, in the middle of the night and the phone was ringing. The reason why we monitor noble gases is because noble gases are very likely to be released in an underground nuclear explosion. Particulates, they are set free in atmospheric explosions, but for underground nuclear explosions, there's a much higher chance for noble gases to be released. And we are looking at the noble gas um, xenon because xenon is produced in high amounts in a fission. Other noble gases are not produced in such high amounts. Yeah, actually we searched for noble gas detections uh, all over the place when uh, the event happened. Yeah. So that means um, uh, there was a special analysis on each measurement in this area, especially in Japan, uh, uh, that came in. Yeah. And uh, what we saw immediately was that there was no immediate uh, radionuclide detection after the, after the event. Uh, but we of course continued searching for interesting uh, radio guide detections. For almost two months afterwards, the CTBTO and its member states kept looking for traces of radioactivity, but none were detected. Then finally, the breakthrough. Some 55 days after that test, we detected actually noble gases at our stations in Takasaki, in, um, around 1,000 kilometers east of uh, North Korea, and in our other, another noble gas monitoring system in Usurisk in Russia. Obviously, the release was delayed. This is not a surprise. This can often happen because the radioactivity is, uh, can be enclosed underground and it may take some time until it reaches the surface. Alternatively, radioactivity can be released later after the explosion at a time when some activity is taken is undertaken at the site of the explosion. Xenon sampling has to go through a fairly complicated and sophisticated air processing. So this here shows, for example, one of the insides of such a noble gas system. This is a column filled with activated charcoal. And xenon gets, when well, the air is sucked through here, and xenon gets absorbed on the activated charcoal, while most of the other air components pass through. After this sampling, there are still um, impurities in the samples and they have to be removed because we need a very pure sample at the end of our sampling process for the measurement. Yes, so this is the analysis tool that our analysts use to review a spectrum after it was automatically processed. Um, in this pane, you see all the uh, counts of our detector uh, and actually there are two detectors measuring at the same time. So we have gamma energies on this scale and we have beta energies on this scale. We don't make a determination about the nature of the event, but um, I think this one was a fairly obvious and, and most nuclear explosions would be fairly obvious and easy for member states to make a determination. Yeah, so for, for us as uh, Austrian National Data Center, uh, the data from, from CTPTO uh, and also the analysis we receive is a very, very important part of our, of our daily work yeah? and it's also an important asset for the verification of this uh, test penetrating.